All right, Jamie. So let's let's lead off um, today. The uh, the corners were made available for interviews, and uh, it was uh, it was Lorenzo Styles' day as he was he was dressed in white and he was practicing with the corners. Um, and it seems like that's going to be at least a thing for the rest of the spring. Um, he said he I believe he said he was going to do both offense and defense. Um, so you know how is that going to work? You know, time will tell on that. But what what are your thoughts, Jamie? I mean, you 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 wrote in your um, your practice report after the open practice that it, you know it was it was one day, but it was it wasn't nothing. And you you said that this could has the potential to be a real thing. What are your thoughts on that, Lorenzo Styles? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's they you know he was asked about it. Marcus Freeman was asked about it on Saturday after the scrimmage too, and you know he said that this is what they were going to do. They were going to give him a, kind of a shot there. Um, I I just think. When you do that, it's like when you start giving a guy reps and one-on-ones um, and then spring is the time to experiment, right? It's the time yeah. to kind of take a look at stuff. But, um, you know, they wouldn't be looking at it if it wasn't something that, you know, that first of all, Lorenzo wanted, mm-hmm. right? That that he wanted and, it, and something that they thought could work, right? Yeah. Be- especially because if you look at where they're at and receiver – they're not overly deep at receiver, right? And, and it's not to say that they have, uh, they don't have good players there, but I mean, Styles is one of the only guys on the team who has actual production. I mean, he led the receivers last year in targets. Yeah, yeah. In the first half of the year, you know, he and I he, believe in yards, like second in yards, or in something. yards, I mean, he, he, and yeah. I mean, he's definitely was like the best uh, yards after catch guy. Yeah, he, yeah, as a freshman he made plays against USC against North Carolina. He had the most receiving yards out of anyone out of the entire season against Oklahoma state's defense, which was like a top five defense. No receiver had more yards than Lorenzo styles had the entire year. Right. And obviously they got some pretty good receivers in the big 12. So it's not to say that, um, you know, if if they're making that move, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want to say that it's like they're giving up on him at receiver, but they must think that he has like a real shot at, at, um, at playing at, at defensive back. And because I think even with like, like people are throwing in the thing, like Tobias Mary or other Chris Tyree. Yeah. Of, of course these guys like, you know, they're doing well this spring, but even with that, you wouldn't just throw a guy there just because like, you know, whatever. It's like, he's got to push for it. He's got to want it. Anyone who uh, watched Lorenzo's like in high school knows that he was also like a great defensive back in high right. school was like a big time prospect. You know, back when he committed, I wrote that like, if he would have committed as a corner, he would have been the best corner that Notre Dame had signed in a long time. Yeah. Like he, he is that kind of ability. So it's not shocking in any means by like, what he's shown before or what his ability is like, this guy has a chance to be like a big time man coverage corner and he's an elite athlete. He's, he is an elite athlete. Right. So I, I, you know what, honestly, I don't, I'm not even sure if catching the ball uh, is, is the issue with him. Like he caught the ball well in these practices that, that we're at, but even if it was, or it wasn't, it really doesn't matter now because now it's like, okay, you have to just say, if you're going to dip your toe in, you got to try to go all in and yeah. see what you got there. Um, it, in a way, it's kind of bad timing because uh, this is the, you know, probably the deepest the corner room has been. Uh, but that's not to say that he can't play there, right? Or that he right. can like, beat out guys there because I think just in terms of raw ability, he's got as much as anyone on the roster, right? Just in terms of just like, change of direction physicality just overall top end speed like he's better than than some of the other guys that they have there so now it's a question of how quick can he pick things up whatever and and really like he he mentioned today after practice that you know he's three semesters from graduating right yeah so that is got to be something that you're has to be probably in the back of his mind too that if he's really going to do this in, in whatever and fully like he'll go all in for this year and kind of see where he's at and then chances are he'll probably be 
a DB. If it doesn't work at Notre Dame, he'll probably be a DB somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's the way to kind of look at it. But I, I mean, I think he can legitimately play and, and help the team. And I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he was a guy who like contributed a lot this year, but obviously it's very early in that process. Yeah. Um, so Jay Lehman says, uh, sometimes a change of position helps a player who has overall talent realize the most upside. Um, I mean, there's an example of that with Xavier Watts at safety right now. Absolutely. Um, I think we saw that with uh, CJ Procise as well. Um, Cam Hart right now. Cam Hart right now. That's, a, that's another good example. Um, so there's, there's multiple examples of that, um, of them changing. Usually it's a little bit earlier, you know, and I yeah. think the hard thing for styles is he's played, he doesn't have a red shirt he, and he doesn't, he obviously doesn't plan to use one. So he has two years, right? So it's yeah. not like, it's like with, uh, with heart and with, um, and with, with Procise, like there were red shirts involved. So you could, you could really um, kind of, you had, they had time. They had a bit of a runway to get used to it. Um, I, I think to your point too, uh, the reason that a lot of people, I, I think us included were so kind of bullish on the wide receivers this year is because, because of guys like, cause they had Lorenzo styles for one. And because they had Caleb Smith, who a lot of people projected would be a very, a very key part. I mean, I projected him to be like a good player. I thought he was going to be really good. And obviously he's left the team. So he he's gone. If you're moving Lorenzo styles, like now you have three guys of the five that we thought were kind of, you know, quote unquote proven. Well, now there's only three. And now you now it's like the 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 freshman receivers who are the early in release, like you see them and you think, OK, like we like what we see, you know, in terms of the way that they're playing. But that, that, that needs to be accelerated. And maybe they have confidence in that. And I think there's a someone brought up Chris Tyree, Ray Jean brought up, brought up Chris Tyree. I think that's another one where they must feel confident about him. And he's going to come up later in one of the uh, uh, that, that's going to come up later in one of the buy or sell kind of questions and what we're going to talk about there um but it's interesting uh, you also brought up the the fact that people are very excited about the cornerback room right i mean obviously ben morrison cam hart uh clarence lewis is coming back uh Jaden mickey a lot of people are very excited about him especially last year at this time and you know just because he had a poor year uh, at the end of last year i mean people still th project him to be a very good player uh you have christian gray who's on campus I think Chance Tucker has shown a, a little bit of ability there. Um, Ryan Barnes is having a good spring. Now that they're, I, I guess they're trying him out at safety. I'm surprised they didn't make the move to safety with Styles, to be honest with you, um, because that's where you have the need, right? That's where they're talking about uh, bringing in someone from the portal. Who, uh, who, who is that? Be like that remains to be seen. If someone's going to enter the portal that Notre Dame likes, I like him at safety. I, I like him. I like him next to Xavier Watts. Um, obviously he's, he's, and they put him in one-on-ones, right? Cause it's like, look, go, go play one-on-one. -on -one. You know how to do that, right? Yeah. That, that you're natural. You've done it before. There is a bit of a learning curve at safety. I think he could learn it. I think he could do it. I think he's probably one of these guys who it's like, he's a pretty natural football player in terms of being able to, you know, understand the game. I think there's an yeah. understanding of the game that goes along with him. I think that would mitigate the move to safety and the, the kind of the difficulty there. Um, but look, they like him at corner. Um, um, where, where do you see him playing as far as boundary or uh, field? Where, where do you see that working out for him? Um, I do see him probably. I mean, I think he could play boundary because I think he could too. He's obviously very physical, but I think you know I, I would see him probably as a as a field guy. I mean, he obviously has to change his direction. That maybe he could end up being a nickel one day. That would be. Probably, I don't imagine that would be this year. That would be a pretty tough transition for him. And that's kind of where it comes into safety too, where I kind of think you move, if, if you're going to move him to corner, part of that is you see, oh, if we have him at corner, it gives you the flexibility to say, well, maybe we're going to take a look at one of our corners and we're going to move one of these guys to safety, right? Yeah. And obviously the big thing with the, the safety I mean, it sounds like pretty solid. They have three guys that they, they feel good about, right? That, that right now, right, with DJ Brown, uh, Ramon Henderson, X Watts, right? They feel good about those three guys. Yeah. They want to be deeper. There's a bunch of injuries, right? right. Uh, you know, Chula's got the shoulder. Benjamin Minich, at, by all accounts, having a good spring, you know, hurt his thumb. So he's out for the rest of the thing. And then Thomas Harper's been out. But you, Thomas Harper's a guy who sh you expect to play he right? should be able to play minutes he should play he she should yeah. be like it uh, definitely too deep at, at the yeah. very least yeah. right and he might even be the starting nickel right so but the thing is is that if you 
so if Styles ends up being a guy that let's let's just say he ends up being like the fourth corner or whatever, mm-hmm. like a guy who can can play. Well, then all of a sudden, that might say, okay, well maybe now this is the time where you'll say, hey Clarence, now we're going to Clarence Lewis, right? Now we're going to take a look at you at safety in this because mm-hmm. obviously Clarence Nichols is a guy who's played outside, he's played inside at nickel. I mean, he's a guy who's played a ton of football for Notre Dame, right? So he's someone that, um, and really he also has, because he played his first year in the pandemic year, he's got two years left. So it's not like a crazy thing for him to make a transition. And I would say if he he was to have any chance at playing in the NFL, would probably be at safety, right? Rather than um, at, at corner. So maybe this is the thing that ultimately makes that transition and that's what what they're thinking i mean i i don't know we'll have we'll have to see um i mean i'd certainly i would think still they would probably try to add a safety if they could um in the portal and then if they don't then maybe it's a question of whether okay well now uh we're gonna say lorenzo you're gonna move to safety for you know the fall or whatever right this summer we're gonna start working with you at safety or one of these other corners are going to move. I obviously, you know, Ryan Barnes is someone you did. It, one thing I'll say about Ryan Barnes too is Ryan Barnes for all the things like uh, you know, people basically had him like transferring out and it was like oh for him. I, and, and it's not like he looked like phenomenal or anything like that. He made a bunch of plays in the ball when mm-hmm. when we were at practice before. Yeah. So that's not nothing. Like that that counts. That counts. That that is something where it shows where like at, at the very least, this guy's engaged and he's, he's trying, he's, he's, he's trying to get in the mix. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, we'll see there with what they do. And obviously there's still like chance Tucker there. Um, I, I would say enviable, enviable competition, uh, at, at, at what they're going to have at defensive back. And, and I, I mean, I, I know they want to get deeper at safety and they want to have more bodies there. But I think if you come out of the spring with those three guys that you know that you're, you know, you you feel confident in, I mean, that's pretty good because I, I think that's exactly what you wanted to have. And then obviously, you know, you hope you get the depth back, um, you know, for all those guys being healthy in the summer. Yeah. And the thing about safety is, you know, I, I think, um, I think, you know, he it, for Ryan Barnes, I'm speaking about, like he, he has a tough time. I think he has a tough time turning and running with these guys. I, I just don't think that he has that. Yes that kind of juice. Um, and, and that, that's hard, right? Especially if you're going to be a boundary, you know, you, you need to be able to turn and run with the best receivers that the other team has, um, at safety. We've seen, we've seen, uh, safeties who, who don't have the greatest speed be effective, right? Like you look at Zeke Mata, who was, a, I think he was a four, eight, four, seven guy when he, and he was obviously a very effective safety for Notre Dame. Um, uh, I think you look at Jalen Elliott who didn't run very fast at his, uh, at, at the combine, you know, maybe he's a little bit faster, but he's yeah, I'd say not he played burner. faster than that, but still he wasn't a, he he's wasn't not a, a burner. Like a blazer, you know? yeah. And, yeah. And you wouldn't put him at corner. Right. And I think, yeah. so if, if there's something, Lloyd Gilman is Barnes, not a super fast dude. Right. I think like, he was, just, a, yeah. I, he was a low four, six, I believe yeah. he was. Um, and so like if, if he has a niche for it and he's a good tackler, right. And he has that aggressive mentality. I mean, that's the thing like Jalen Elliott, um, Alohi, Zeke model. Like these are all Kyle like, Hamilton didn't run. Kyle Hamilton. Forward. I mean, he's a little bit different. I know he played. It, 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 but it that just shows you though all three of those guys none of these guys are uh you know no one's looking at the none of them are four or five mid right? no one's doing that but yeah. they played at a certain speed because they were smart football players instinctive um you know there were there were other intangibles that go along with it that made them really really good football players yeah. i mean obviously kyle Hans was a great player but you know what i mean right like yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In Gilman, I'm in the in, 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 you in don't have category. to be a primo athlete to be a good college football player at safety. Yes. Right. Um, Jay, Jay brings up Micah Bell. Um, don't forget about Micah Bell. See how it stacks up this fall. Of course. Um, he just hasn't been on campus yet. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I did notice he, he ran PRs this weekend. Uh, Jamie got PR uh, 2143 in the 200, uh, 1041. He tied his PR in the hundred. I was getting a little concerned. I, I saw some of his track times earlier. And I wanted it was something I was monitoring, right? Because he he had run a little bit slower, and it's like if 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 he's lost speed for whatever reason, like that kind of takes away a lot of his value. 1041, 2143, the speed is there. Um, that's real. So um that's, so, that's so that's Jeremiah Love too, I believe, uh ran like a 10.5. Uh, he ran a 1054. The wind was six point one 
uh, oh, meters okay. per second, which is like it, so I I did the conversion. It's like ten seven nine, which is still good. Um, and it's early in the year, right? So a lot of these guys they don't run their uh, they don't run their state meets till um, you know May June. So we'll see um, we'll see how he ends up there. But ten seven nine still a good time with uh, no win. Um, oh, Jack Hopkins, this is a good call. Uh, Tony Driver uh, comes to mind in ninety eight ninety nine, who made the move to the secondary and was pretty good. It's true. You know, he went from running back in 97 to safety in 98, running back 99, safety in 2000, which uh, that's that's that, he, he went back and forth twice. So that's pretty impressive by him. I, I do wonder, you know, and, and Lorenzo Styles was talking about, um, you know, he's going to play both ways. Look, I, obviously, I love it, right? I love the idea of them playing both ways. I don't trust Notre Dame to effectively no. do that at all. It's like I, I it's like I, it's like I'm, I'm being very contradictory because I want the, I want him to do it, but I think for them, it's like, could he get twenty at receiver, twenty at DB? That sounds great to me. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I, I don't think that they can pull it off. They've never shown the ability to pull it off. I would love them to do it. Um, so we'll see. So we'll see. Um, but, uh, just one, one other thing on the position moves too, right? Like, I mean, obviously you got Cam Hart, X Watts, right? Like those are two guys that are going to start for Notre Dame, both guys yeah. who switch, switch positions. Um, you know, Ramon Henderson, I know he was corner to safety. Another guy who switched positions like Kavari Russell was obviously yeah. a guy who, who switched. Matthias Farley came in. He originally worked as, as a, a receiver, right? Um, Bennett Jackson also. Yeah. Three guys who started in that 2012 team were all guys who, who switched positions. I mean, and, and you know, Jack mentioned uh, Tony Driver. Jeff Burris was a running back uh, originally, right? Obviously, he's a very famous example of a guy moving. Uh, I believe Pat Terrell, uh, another. Pat Terrell you know, was a receiver. And then yeah, so, the safety. I mean, there's – it is the most common move. Deep Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most common move, like offense, someone moving and an, moving an athlete to defensive back. It's the most common move. And also too, it's not like he didn't play it before. So that's the other thing. Right. It's not like he was like a guy who's like, man, I never even played this. Much. That was the thing that was wild about Kavari Russell because he was like, I didn't even play DB. Like it was like maybe he'll switch to receiver. That that was the thing with Kavari Russell. It's like they recruit him as a running back. Maybe he'll switch to receiver, and that's what's just so wild. But then he was like, "Oh, I'm just going to start as a true freshman." And I know they didn't have a good depth chart or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he played as well as he did in that year that probably makes it the most wild position change that you'll you'll ever see. And obviously, you, you don't play pretty well for Notre the Dame. The way that he worked out is honestly stunning. Like that, that Notre Dame was in so much trouble at corner in 2012. And, yes. and like you they were especially like Low Wood, he tears his Achilles and look, he was going to be the starting corner. He was no great shakes. I'm telling you, he was that was a liability whether he was out there. Oh yeah, he was not going to. He yeah. was not great and he tears his Achilles. It's like what is Notre Dame going to do? They had they Bennett Jackson had never played corner before. Like it it, it was, and then Kamari Russell. It's like, oh, fresh male America. And like that really worked out. Um uh you yeah, Patrick Carter. It's tough. Sometimes you can move defensive back to receiver a la Kyle Hamilton. Mm, no. All right. Well, that's tough. All right. So we'll 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 continue to monitor the Runzo Styles thing. And I think that's gonna be a hot, uh hot, hot uh storyline to follow during the spring game. 